This is a video I was n hoping to never have to make, but it makes a good example. You see, this was my Mac before I had a Mac. Before I had a Mac, what I had learned to do was install Mac OS, or Mac OS X, as it was called back then, to a, a external drive and make it bootable. So before I owned a MacBook, I always did was I borrowed um, our iMac at home, our family Mac, for my own personal use, and I would boot off this drive. And if I had time, sometimes I'd borrow my mom's MacBook and do the same thing. Even when I went to her school, I would uh, boot off the uh, school's uh, iMacs off of my external drive and, you know, have my computer to go. Unfortunately, this drive, before it was my bootable Mac, it was my external drive for my netbook. So this drive is it beyond old. It's a 300 and I think it's a 320 or 350 gig drive, and it has decided to fail. Unfortunately, as all hard drives eventually do, is they fail. This one, as you can see, has been through a lot. It's it's really beat up. Um, so eventually, I tried to do is boot into my my Mountain Lion install, and it failed multiple times. It, it would boot into recovery fine, but I could not recover my partition. So what I did recently, I've decided, you know, I'm going to plug it in my Mac, try and format it, and maybe I can use it as a backup for my iBook. No dice. Can't format it, it fails. Uh, it makes a very interesting grinding noise when it tries to uh, read, almost like, click, click, almost kind of like that. So, my options were, before I decided to try and format, was to try to recover the data as fast as possible. That didn't work. I could send it out and have someone pay pay someone to uh, recover it. Not going to do that because it's expensive. Number three is just leave it in a drawer and hope maybe it works again in the future. That's obviously not going to happen. So let's talk about, I guess, hard drives and our data. When you're using a computer, if you know what you're doing, I recommend, strongly recommend you create multiple redundant copies across multiple machines. If you have multiple computers, keep multiple copies. Like, if you have, say, your photos, make take your photos and put them on another machine. Make another duplicate of it. Keep duplicates on separate drives. Even if they're in the cloud, I recommend keeping them local still. Your passwords, keep those somewhere else. And I guess I should talk about security. You see, even though this hard drive has failed, I'm not going to just throw it straight in the bin. That's a big no-no when you dispose of data. Companies, companies and individuals should never, even if the drive may be blank, unless it's securely erased, do not throw a hard drive if it contains any data on it, unless you've securely erased it, because it can be used to backtrace you and, and even recover data that's not, you know, you think is not recoverable. I have received multiple computers over time where people thought, oh, I erased my data by just simply throwing the data in the trash can or recycle bin and then not emptying it. I'm sorry, I mean, that's a, a good step, but you forgot to click erase or empty recycle bin. So as I pop this open, a lot of other times, everything's just left on the machine. If you're going to get rid of a computer, even to family or friends, it's best to do is ask them how to get your data off first and have them wipe the drive for you. I mean, I like having sometimes people's data. I mean, I, the only thing I take is music. I'll take music and sometimes some uh, pro programs if there's anything I can salvage. But other than that, I, wipe, I always usually wipe the drive securely. Like the last video I did, I think on the DHP I pulled, um, or it's unlisted, I uh, had someone, neighbor told me to wipe the drive because she didn't know how to, but she wanted all the data. Okay, great. It contained a lot of confidential data that if somebody, if it got into the wrong person's hands, could have brought the company down. Now, unfortunately, that neighbor is no longer with us. Uh, poor uh, heart attack. I still have that machine, and now it's increased in my uh, sentimental value. So, as you can see, it is a Western Digital. Let me see what is this capacity? It tells you 320 gigs. So I was a little off. Um, it just makes grinding noises, and it takes, uh, it takes millennia to mount. It, it takes maybe 30 minutes to mount on a Mac, sometimes an hour, and, and it just utility freezes. It, it takes forever. When I try to reboot off of the bootable partition, it just, it sits, and then it freezes. 
so this video is going to be about how to dispose of data that's not recoverable securely and confidentially. Now, a lot of videos you see online have these big shredders. Sure, that's all nice and, and dandy. I don't have a shredder. And I'm not going to send it off to some uh, uh, shredding company because I don't trust them. So what I'm going to do is, and of course I didn't plan for this video. Well, let's bring around my toolkit while I wait for my Mac to uh, set up. Here, I need a try it now. Torx. Torx or pencil up, as you call it. At least I'm able to find all my stuff. I'm going to need a screwdriver, a very strong magnet, and then probably a hammer. And I probably need to go outside. I don't know if these are glass. Hold on, the size of these screws. They are Torx. They look like T6 to me. So this is one way to securely dispose of your data. That should fit pretty well. Now, mind you, what I am doing is not a reversible action. If your drive is failing and you want your data recovered, by all means, send it off to a recovery plant to have it recovered in a clean room. For me, though, this data I've mostly replaced over time, or it's, you know, I've, I've had, again, redundant backups other places. So, I used to do is store all my photos on here, but I've had... At that point, I had a Flickr account, which now they've, you know, limited me to a thousand photos, so now I'm using my iMac. <sighs> just can't have photo storage where I can store things at nice, ultra quality without paying. Anyway. So this contained uh, all of my photos, my media. It contained World of Warcraft on it for a while. Um, a lot of emulators. All of my iTunes music was on here, or still is. Uh, documents, all of my documents. Uh personal, identical documents, like passwords, my, I don't have tax returns, but like receipts and bills, my shipping addresses on this drive, my uh, YouTube account was logged in here, Apple ID, all my password lists, I don't want that getting out. So the best thing to do when a drive fails, if you're not going to send it in for recovery and you're okay with doing this, now, if you don't want to take your time and have a nice, clean, you know, destructive way, by all means, take a hammer and go to town. But for me, I don't want to make a mess, and I want it to be clean and easy. Best thing to do, and this is now non-reversible after I've done that. Mind you, this is permanent. There is no going back. This drive is from April, 15th of April, 2012. You can see I have drives that are older that still work. This drive just, you know, I probably took a few hits in my bag and, you know, eventually it went. I'm going to keep the magnets, of course. There should be a screw right here, I think. There it is. This is why I have so many hard drive magnets floating around. But I do this to any drive that fails, usually, is I usually just take a magnet to the platters. And if I'm unsure, <laughs> I will destroy the platters. My question is, is I don't know if these are glass or if they're metal. If they're glass, they will shatter and make a mess. Now, there is no warranty on this drive. Now, let me see. Is there a screw in the middle of this guy? I don't feel one. I think it's only in the platter. Yeah, these things are sealed, so once you crack them open, you break the uh, seals. Did I get all the screws out? I do not have my black stick on me. There we go. Breaking the seals. There's no going back now. This data's long gone. You can, I guess, if you don't damage the platters, if you're careful when you open these, you can send it in to have it recovered. Just don't touch anything if you open these. But don't attempt to use the drive after you've cracked it open. After that, you're risking destroying the drive with dust. These things are sealed for a reason. The older ones were not sealed because they had... Oh, there's a screw. Had, um... Is that a screw there, too? So there is hidden screws in it. See you. Oh, yeah. Pay attention for hidden screws. Suckers like to hide. Oops. I presume my dad's not going to interrupt my video. I won't, I won't mind too much. There we go. 
So here are our heads and oh, there is my data. This this we don't care about the head. We don't care about the board. We care about the platters. This here is all of my data. So what I'm going to do is simply just to hold the platter in place. It's fine if I get fingerprints out at this point because it's already dead. I'm going to remove the platters. By all means, go to town scratching it too if you really want your data securely, confidentially erased. The best way is to have it professionally shredded. Oh, it's only one platter. Huh. I thought it was two. So this is 320 gigs of data. It looks almost like a mini disc. Shocking. See, the head's damaged. Uh, maybe a little. There might be some. Um, Looks pretty clean. So this, I don't know if there's anything important. So what I'm going to do, and I don't know how this is going to work, and I'm going to try to avoid anything else that might get damaged. Let's grab my lovely, lovely neodymium here, this little guy, and just go to town. This is one way to securely erase data. This is probably the lightest way you could do it. This is also scratching the disk. You know how hard drives work is they they float the heads uh, micrometers above the disk to transfer data. This is just one way I'm trying to erase erase my data. I am a little sad because I did have some stuff on here I wanted, but I can recover it at some point or another from another means by finding it off the internet again. So that's one way to get rid of the data. So now what I'm going to do is probably go outside and take a hammer to this, just to make sure this platter is completely destroyed before I pitch the drive. I have no use for this drive, I don't need to keep it. The only thing I'm going to hang on to is probably the magnets, because these are really useful for magnetizing my tools. Other than that, I have no use for it. So that data should hopefully be corrupt. It's probably still present and probably in a recoverable form. So what I'm going to do is let's go head outside now and take a hammer to it. But first, let me clean this up. I'm going to pretty much put everything back except the platter. <laughs> Where's the spindle screw? Uh, let's see, there are a total of... I'm trying to keep myself off camera. Um, one of these guys is the spindle screw. If I mix it up, I'm going to have a bad time. No, 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 no. I'll find that later. Oops. Oh, these are not magnetic. <laughs> Listen, learned. Hold the screw. I think this is too big. I think it had a smaller thread. I think it was this guy. Yeah, it was this one. This is what happens I don't use my screw tray even for destructive purposes. I forget where they go. This should go all the way flush. There we go. I usually hang on to these drives because they're useful as um, magnets, as well as sometimes voice coils. I've not tried that yet, but I am interested. You can see how these are sealed. You can see the um, mechanics here are also sealed, and the entire drive has a gasket around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it back together. If I can line up the uh, screws. And put it back together again. After you do this, your data, there is, it's a ticking clock once you open up a hard drive, is your data will immediately, the more you run that drive after opening it, the more damage you do. Dust is bad. Again, it's micrometers above the, uh, or even atomic meters, I don't know. It's, it's very stinking close to the surface, and any dust can damage the platters. And surface damage is near almost impossible to recover data from. At least from my standpoint. Now this drive is not even encrypted either. That'll be next. Is the next thing I should talk about in this video as well is encryption. If you know what you're doing and you like your privacy and security, encrypt your drive. Please. And if you're disposing of your computer and you're a knucklehead who forgets to wipe your drive, at least encrypt it with a really complex password and have it set to wipe the drive automatically after so many failed attempts. Oh crap, I'm never gonna find that again. Well then, I'm gonna put everything in poles, I gotta find that screw, and these are not magnetic either, so. Mm. Perfect! 
Dropped it. Oh, wait, did it fall in my pants? Oh. Where'd it go? Hold on, I gotta try to find it. Third time I dropped a screw today. Oh, goodness. Well, you love it when you drop a screw that's not magnetic. Uh -oh. Where did it go? I just vacuumed this floor, so it couldn't have gone very far. Did it sure fall in my pants? Do. Oh boy. Anyway, encryption. So what I am doing now as my new motto is I'm encrypting all my computers as best I can. The only drive I'm not encrypting on my desktop is my 2 terabyte, as it contains all my images to my machines, and I'm not quite sure if I want to encrypt that yet. Where did that screw go? Oh boy. Shouldn't have dropped it. Oops. Find that. Let me grab that magnet real quick. I doubt I'll pick it up, but I'm going to try. I'm just running a magnet over it. I can hear it. I heard it fall. Where did it go? Didn't go far. Well, utter fail in my video planning. This is all unscripted. <laughs> I don't script. I might try to edit, but I, it gives me too much anxiety to do scripts right now. Because I'm a terrible writer. Uh, I'm not seeing it, and I'm not feeling it. Uh-oh. So the screw may be lost to the end of time. Ah, there it is. And the second I heard to stop looking for it, it appeared. Tell ya, that's how my stuff works. I give up, and then it appears. How to find stuff you can't find. Don't bother. It'll show up on its own. Let's see if I don't drop it again. Alrighty. So with that, this drive is now non-functioning. Now, you can plug it back in. It's not going to do anything. I just need to line up these little bumpers. This drive, this drive, bumper here goes to the LED. I don't know why they put the LED on this thing. And I wish this thing had a standard interface. I mean, there's pins on it, but it's USB 3, so it's kind of proprietary. And I do not know which way these bumpers go. That's a bit of a problem. Or where they go exactly. I know these bumpers are probably different sizes. I don't care, just stick them on whatever way, and whatever they really fit is the way they go on. Do these go the other way? Guess. I oh, know, I'm wasting my time putting it back together even though the drive is not functioning. How I work around here. Oops, let me try to push that bumper back into place. Back into the caddy. It should line up, and it did. There we go. Now it's in. Sure. Lined up. Yep. So I can pop this guy back on. Now, if you're disposing of a customer's hard drive, you probably want to provide video evidence of you doing so to ensure security is kept. Oh, this goes on a specific way. At this point, I can I can not I can handle the drive with a care without a care in the world because the platter is not in it. SSDs are f fairly reliable. Let me see. Is that right fairly reliable. I'm not sure how many write cycles they have. My SSDs are you know starting to get up there in age, but they still work fine, security wise. But I don't know. I'm still on the learning train here with that. Is this little in there? There we go. Still a noticeable gap. There we go. And we're done. So this is all of the important data. So, let's go head out. Alright, since I said I was going to destroy the platter, there's the platter. Here's a hammer. I haven't smashed anything in years. Here we go. Yep, it's definitely metal. Nice. This will make sure my data is never recoverable. Ever.
Now you get like a nice hole in it. It's almost supposed to put a hole in it. Chicken out the grass. <laughs> a poor lawn. Definitely metal though. Put a hole in it, please. For me. Not rip up our progress. Put it around. Pretty damn strong platters, that's for sure. And get a nice hole in it. This is one way to securely make sure your data is hopefully negative 100 chances of ever being recovered. Can it be bent? And it's hard. <sighs> My camper is still opening. That is some destruction right there. I'm trying to get it so it splits the disc, but I don't know if I'm able to be able to. Right up, my poor lawn. Sorry, Dad. I to make sure it's never recoverable. Since this was my Mac before my Mac, I had all my passwords and accounts and, and like card info. Oh, it did snap in half. Pretty close. Oh, that's not too nice. Try to claw again. Come on, snap it in half. Nah, it's just kind of bending it. Oh well. We need an impact probably to do that. Yep, I'd say that's pretty much non-recoverable. And there you go. That is how to securely erase your data. Provided your hard drive fails and there's no way to wipe it and you don't trust the shredding companies. I mean, you could probably just leave it on a shelf, but I'd rather it be destroyed. And that concludes this video. Hopefully you learned something.